Morning, everybody. <coughs> How are we all in this cruel, messed up world? So, um, yeah, we've really had a crazy, <coughs> crazy couple of months lately. Well, we have globally, but we seem to have had a, a crazy couple of months in this country. <coughs> so, obviously, I've woke up this morning. The terrible news that's appeared on my telly. It appears there's been um, a terrorist attack outside a, a mosque in London, Finsbury Mosque. Um, the news is telling me that one man has died, um, ten are injured. That's 11, by the way. The, um, another news station is telling me that one has died and eight are injured. That's nine, by the way. <coughs> I've posted about numbers before. Look, I'm just going to get straight to the point with this. I don't know the answers. I don't know the facts. I haven't got a crystal ball. I wasn't there. But what I will tell you is I don't believe the government. I don't believe mainstream media. I actually said a couple of days ago in respect to what was going on with the, the tower block inferno where people have been murdered. I actually posted a couple of posts ago, the government needs another terrorist attack. The government needs a false flag to take their, the media and the public's attention away from them. Now, in respect to the public anger at, at what was happening with the tower block in London, in respect to the, to the outcry from the public, you know, <coughs> I was expecting this terrorist attack to deflect away because these terrorist attacks do time perfectly. Now, I don't mean to disrespect anyone. You know, people do still die in false flag attacks. The people who pin down the attacker are openly coming out to the media saying it's like he wasn't there, it's like he wasn't... He, he, his body wasn't functioning properly. I'm just going to go straight in, and we do know that this thing is called mind control. We do know that there's secret services within the governments around the world that carry out false flag attacks. We know that people do die in false flag attacks. Sometimes these attacks are made out as if they've happened and they don't happen. We know at the minute the government and the establishment is struggling. We, we know for sure, if this had been a terrorist attack and it was presumably ISIS, who were created and funded by the West. If this was an ISIS attack against white people, I don't believe um, they would have been able to contain the public anger after the London attack, the Manchester attack, then we had the Tower Block Inferno. So I, I was sat there all yesterday, genuinely, on my couch, petrified, um, you know, thinking, it's the 18th of the 6th, are these people going to strike? I even went to bed last night thinking, do you know what? How lucky we, we've not had an attack. How lucky no one else has died. How lucky that... It seems that we've had a day off from the chaos. And then I wake up to this. So this is perfect timing. So now the Muslim community is rightly outraged. The Muslim community is, as well as other parts of the community in this country, are saying the media aren't reporting this incident as a terrorist attack. Straight away. Straight away. The news is occupied this morning. We've got people who like Muslims, people who don't. Straight away. Same old rhetoric what the government relies on. Same old rhetoric that people far to the left and people far to the right rely on. This is ludicrous. This is ludicrous. So our attentions were on the government failing us. Our attentions were the fact that children, men, women are burnt alive <laughs> so a building could be wrapped in plastic. Our anger was the fact that we've recently had a terrorist attack. One in London, one in Manchester. Attackers known to the security services. The problem in this country at the minute, there's a lot of anger towards the establishment. But what keeps the establishment happy at the minute, what keeps them in power, what keeps them out of everyone's focus, is everybody seems busy arguing about, do you like Muslims, do you not like Muslims? It's got nothing to do with that. We should just not like terrorists. We should just not like radicals. And the biggest feckin' terrorists and the biggest radicals out there is the government. The number one funder of terrorism is the government. Who buys all the oil off ISIS. You know, this is just what the government needs, just what Theresa Mayhem needs, just what the establishment needs. Something to distract us all, something to keep us all busy, something to keep the hatred and anger against each other. So now we've got everybody arguing, has Tommy Robinson caused this? Has he not? Has the news caused this? Is it something that the government's done? This is all the government's fault. This is all the government's failing. And, and that's the thing what does me head in. We get these governments and they're just puppets. They're a charade for the establishment. They're a charade for the elite, for the bankers, for these powerful men with hundreds of billions of pounds who have influence all around the world and create wars. 
This is the real problem. We're, we're experiencing a mass awakening in this country. We're experiencing a mass awakening globally. More people are asking questions. More people are actually doing the research. Even more moderate people now. People who don't believe 9-11 was an inside job. Even more moderate people are actually coming out now and saying, something's not going on. I, I spoke to people's nans and granddads who have supported this system, who supported this establishment all their life. Far from a conspiracy theorist, far from a radical lefty or a radical right. And they're even saying the same old rhetoric. Something doesn't add up. Financially, emotionally, this whole system, this whole charade does not work. We catch the mainstream media out lying again and again and again and again and again. And today, we're supposed to be having, being told that more people have died in this tower block. In London, when they initially tried to play it down, there was 17, there was 30. There was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in that tower block. Leading celebrities, local people from the area, charity all came out and said, where are these people? Where are they? Where are their bodies? What happened to them? Why are we being lied to? Again and again and again and again and again and again and again. We were attacked by ISIS. ISIS was created and funded by Western intelligence agencies. I am... I am sick of screaming it from the top of my voice. This is not a problem of non-Muslim against Muslim. It's not a problem of left against right. We've got to come together. We've got to overthrow this establishment. We've got to overthrow this government. We've got to confront these secret services. We've got to be brave. We've got to be bold. And we've got to ask questions. Not just what the feckin' media tells us to believe. Or the telly tells us to believe. Or the latest false flag. These things do not just happen by coincidence. It's always us that loses out. Members of the community, members of the public. Children are dying. While these secret services and governments plot more war, plot more destruction, plot more chaos around the world. This is unacceptable. It's high time people woke up and started asking questions. Muslims aren't the enemy. Non-Muslims are not the enemy. The left's not the enemy. The right's not the enemy. The establishment's the enemy. The establishment is our enemy. The establishment is causing this. The establishment is murdering people. And even if it wasn't a false flag and it had been some man to the right who'd been that outraged, it's the mainstream media that have corrupted him. It's these far-right groups that are allowed to flourish. You have far-right groups to the left and the right preaching hate, preaching the destruction of other people, saying it's okay to go and kill someone because of the beliefs. No, it's not okay to kill anyone because of the beliefs. It's not okay to kill anyone because they're different than you. I said it once, I say it time and time again. Muslims are not the enemy. People who are radicalised are the enemy. People who want to kill us are the enemy. People who put bombs on themselves are the enemy. People who buy oil off these people are the enemy. We need to stop arguing amongst ourselves. We've got to come together. That burning of all them people in London should have been the catalyst for big change in this country. And now, conveniently, we get an attack on a mosque. Muslims have been killed, everyone's outraged, everyone's arguing amongst themselves, and the deflection is taken away from the establishment. The establishment's happy for us all to blame the media, the media's not reporting this. It's the division, it's keeping us occupied, it's keeping our eyes and our attention off the establishment. It's creating division when we need unity. They are petrified, they are petrified that one day we will turn up at their door. Muslim, non-Muslim, black, white, young, old, straight, transgender, Z, anything you want to identify with. We will all be there one day and we'll be there in number and we'll be there to say no, we do not want to live this way. No, we do not consent. No, we do not agree to murder. And no, we will not be divided by this tyranny, by this oppression, by these rich man's games. Luciferian, Masonic, Saturn worshipping maniacs. That's what's wrong with this world. That is the problem in this world. We need to be brave, we need to be bold, we need to be asking questions, but more than anything, we need unity. We need to come together. Radicals and terrorists are the government. The government is the biggest terrorist, the biggest funder of terrorism out there. The government and the establishment are the enemy, not each other. Peace, love and light. Have a marvellous day. Stay strong and stay safe. Thanks for your time.